This is part of a series I call the Making Evidence-Based Medicine Simple Series, or MESS for short. MESS minis are brief reviews of essential EBM concepts. In this MESS mini, we will discuss the use of number needed to treat and number needed to harm. The number needed to treat answers the question, how many people do I need to treat with an intervention in order to benefit one additional patient when compared to the control group? Importantly, it is not the number needed to treat to benefit one patient. It is the number needed to treat to benefit one additional patient compared to the other group. The number needed to harm answers the question, how many people do I need to treat with an intervention in order to harm one additional patient when compared to the control group? Importantly, it is not the number needed to harm one patient. It is the number needed to harm one additional patient compared to the other group. Whether a number needed to treat or number needed to harm is calculated depends on the nature of the outcome. A number needed to treat is calculated with an efficacy outcome, one that is beneficial to the patient. A number needed to harm is calculated for a safety outcome when it is considered an adverse event to the patient. This is the equation to calculate the number needed to treat and number needed to harm. The number needed to treat and number needed to harm are one divided by the absolute risk difference, or alternatively, the inverse of the absolute risk difference. A number needed to treat or harm should not be calculated when the absolute risk difference is not statistically significant. The confidence intervals around the number needed to treat or number needed to harm do not make sense if the confidence interval for the risk difference includes zero. This formula is not especially intuitive, but there is an easier way to understand it. Let's use an example of an absolute risk difference and try to figure out how it was related to the number needed to treat. The absolute risk of ED discharge with drug A is 70%, and the absolute risk for ED discharge with drug B is 75%. By convention, the absolute risk difference is the absolute risk in the control group minus the absolute risk in the intervention group, though this is not always the case. In this example, drug B is the control and drug A is the intervention. The absolute risk difference is easy to calculate. It is 75% minus 70%, which equals 5%. But what exactly does the absolute risk difference mean? We can look at it in one of two ways. 5% more patients will be discharged if treated with drug B when compared to drug A, or for every 100 patients treated with drug B, five more patients will be discharged when compared to drug A. Since discharge from the ED is a positive or beneficial outcome, we will calculate the number needed to treat rather than a number needed to harm. So how is the absolute risk difference related to the number needed to treat? We will start with our absolute risk difference we just calculated on the last slide, which is 5%. This can be expressed as a percentage, 5 out of 100, or as a decimal, 0.05. 5 out of 100 means that if we treat 100 patients with drug B compared to drug A, then five additional patients will benefit. The number needed to treat asks a slightly different question. To benefit one patient, how many additional do we need to treat? Five divided by 100 becomes 0.05. 0 0.05 is 1 divided by the number needed to treat. By cross-multiplying, we get the number needed to treat is 1 divided by 0 0.05, which is exactly the format for the number needed to treat formula we started off with. Number needed to treat is 1 divided by the absolute risk difference. The absolute risk difference is expressed as a decimal and not as a percentage. And finally, we get a number needed to treat of 20. In the last slide, we calculated a number needed to treat of 20. It is important to express this in English using the study parameters. If you cannot do this, then you don't truly understand the concept. However, this does take practice and repetition. We will use the following template. For every number needed to treat patients treated with the intervention, 
one additional patient would have a beneficial outcome compared to the control group. The phrase additional patient is essential. This becomes, for every 20 patients treated with drug B, one additional patient would be discharged from the ED compared to drug A. The lower the number needed to treat, the more patients will benefit from the intervention. We will use a ketamine study for rapid sequence intubation to calculate a number needed to harm. The study outcome is a negative outcome, hypotension. So we will be calculating a number needed to harm rather than a number needed to treat. Again, a number needed to treat or a number needed to harm should not be calculated when the risk difference is not statistically significant. The absolute risk of hypotension in the ketamine group was 18.3%. The absolute risk of hypotension in the automidate group was 12.4%. In this example, ketamine is the control and automidate is the intervention. The absolute risk difference is 18.3% minus 12.4% which equals 5.9%. The number needed to harm is one divided by the absolute risk difference. This becomes one divided by 0 0.059. Notice again that the absolute risk difference in the denominator is expressed as a decimal and not as a percentage. The number needed to harm we calculate is 17. A confidence interval for the number needed to harm can also be calculated. We just calculated a number needed to harm of 17. Again, it is important to express in English using the study parameters. We will use the following template. For every number needed to harm patients treated with the intervention, one additional patient would have a harm outcome when compared to the control group. Again, the phrase additional patient is essential. For every 17 patients treated with ketamine, one additional patient would have peri-intubation hypotension when compared to the automidate group. The lower the number needed to harm, the more patients will be harmed from the intervention. In summary, number needed to treat and number needed to harm are quantifiable measures of benefit and harm. They are easy to calculate from an absolute risk difference. Practice expressing them in a sentence to better grasp their meaning.